In this video, we are going to discuss the tips on how to manage your money like the 1%. Many of these strategies go against what 90% of the finance gurus out there teach because, well, they are giving really trashy advice. So let's not waste any more time and get started. The wealthy didn't just got the idea that, hey, I'd be really cool if I was rich, and then go back to their old same routine. They didn't just stop thinking, they also move on to executing. But before successful people can execute, they need to plan. So you better take out a piece of paper and let's jot down your money goals. The key here is to work backwards. Let's say you want to buy a private jet one day. What you want to do is figure out how much that will cost and set up the steps that you need in order to get there. Which by the way, we are going with the same exact ways to manage your money like a wealthy. The most important thing to remember is just make sure you have a goal. It will help you keep track of your progress and give you something to work towards and to strive for. Saving money just to save is really boring. But getting closer to reach your goal every single day. Now that's exciting. The most important formula that 1% uses to manage their wasn't taught at school. But thankfully, they did teach us something even more important. The Pythagorean Theorem. It teaches how to find the length of a triangle. The secret formula has to do with how much money you have coming in versus how much money you have going out, also known as cash flow. So you can imagine it as income minus expenses equal cash flow. If you have a positive cash flow, it means that you have money left over. And if you have negative, then well, you're falling into debt. Everything the wealthy does leads back to this formula. So it only makes sense that we work with this. And first, we'll focus on expenses. Truly wealthy people were actually frugal. Warren Buffett with a net worth of over $100 billion still lives in the same house that he bought in 1958. You need to understand that truly wealthy people did not get to where they were truly were by being flashy and fancy. The wealthy are very cautious spenders that focus on the value of things. We should focus on the bigger spending habits. Like, did you really need to spend 80,000 on a brand new car? That's gonna make you happy for maybe a few weeks. And then that car turns into a just regular old car with the same functionality as every other car. Detail budgeting could still be a good option if you're on a super tight budget, if you have spending problem, or if you're in a financially unstable place. But if you don't have these money issues, then best thing to do is to simplify personal finance as much as possible. Because just psychologically speaking, the more obstacles that we have in the way, the less likely we're gonna do it. The rich are also really good at thinking advantage of laws. They hire super fancy financial professionals to help figure out dozens of different tax loopholes to reduce their taxes. Some of the easiest ways that you can also save on your taxes are First is the 401k, which is an employer-sponsored retirement account. You can make pre-tax contributions up to maximum of $19,500 in 2021 and then invest the money over time. A 401k is the simplest way to lower your tax bill. And plus, your employer usually offers a 410k match, which is basically for your money. And here's how this whole thing works. Let's assume your salary is $35,000 and your tax bracket is 25. If you do nothing and you pay taxes on the entire thing, then you pay $8,750 in taxes. But if you contribute six new salary, which is $2,100 into a tax-deferred 400k account, then your taxable income becomes $32. And the income tax on the $32,100 is $8,225, which is $525 less than the tax on your full salary. So not only do you automatically save for retirement, you also save on the taxes that you pay today. You will, however, have to pay taxes on the money when you retire, but likely at much lower tax bracket. Second is this thing called an HSA, or health savings account, which is available if you have a high deductible health insurance plan. And just like the 401k, the money you contribute to has is pre-tax, and you can also use that amount to pay for qualified medical expenses. Also, just like 401k, you can invest it. The third way to save on taxes is with the Roth IRA account, and this is quite possibly the most powerful way to invest. You might have heard of the infamous Peter Thiel, who famously turned his Roth IRA account into a 5 billion monster that he has to pay $0 with the Roth RIA. You contribute money that's already been taxed on, but you don't have to pay taxes when you withdraw it in retirement. So although these contributions don't lower your tax bill in the present time, after your money grows, a few years after, you can withdraw the full amount tax-free. You remember those pesky loans that you look at years ago that you're still now paying off every single month? Well, that's really impacting your expenses. The reason these bad debts are so annoying is because of the interest rate that you need to pay. The longer the interest grows, 
the more you're going to end up paying. Now the quickest and the mathematically speaking the most efficient way to get rid of these debt is using this thing called the avalanche method. Think of how much money you can budget to pay off your debt every single month. Now make a list of all the balances and the minimum payments that required and list them in order from highest lowest by interest expense. Now many finance gurus out there recommend the snowball method, instead where you pay off the smallest balance first to keep you psychologically motivated. But mathematically, avalanche method is the best way to go. You've probably heard a lot about day trading from a bunch of different finance gurus. But what they don't tell you is that 90% of the day traders lose money. If you do not want these terrible odds, when it comes to your money or anything 90 to 10, then the best thing you can do is instead invest long term. You can use good tap to increase your income. Yeah, you heard it right. You need to realize that not all debt is bad. And the idea that you need to avoid all debt is pretty trash financial advice, assuming that you're responsible with your money. Good debt is a type of debt that allows you to create wealth as the income and the capital growth from the investment pays off the debt and exceeds the cost of paying off the debt. Let's say for example you purchase a rental property for $200,000 and you rent it out for $2,000 a month. You pay $1,000 a month to the bank for the mortgage payments. And let's say you need around $6,000 per month to cover all the expenses in running your rental property. So what this means is that your property is now making you $400 each month including all expenses. However, there is always one thing you need to keep in mind. It's the risk involved that your investment may actually decrease in value, which results in you owing more on the loan than the value of your investment. So make sure you're extra careful with this strategy. The next way to increase your income has two secret ways to supercharge it. So these 1% wealthy people love to educate themselves to gain information because of the value that they get down the line. And thankfully, you're doing the same exact thing by watching this video. Investing in yourself can yield one of the best returns on investments that you can ever make. Whether it's investing in learning a new skill, developing yourself professionally or personally. The next way to supercharge the cash flow formula is through strategic planning, especially when it comes to money management. You need to make sure that you have the money to support yourself through struggles that can pop out of nowhere. Make sure you have an emergency fund that will support you for up to three or six months. This will give you a greater peace of mind that would allow you to take greater risk to allow your income to grow. Everything you do in life will impact this. Even if you spend thousands of dollars with a private financial advisor, they're gonna start with the exact same formula and tell you what you learned today. Now that you have a solid plan, it's time to execute. Because thinking and planning without taking actions doesn't do anything. The best time to start was yesterday, but the next best time to start is today. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.